Welcome to Janet Today, Janet Tomorrow, Janet Forever, the Janet Jackson podcast where two cousins discuss all things Janet Jackson. Today, we have a taped interview to share, but before we do that, we've got a bit of Janet news to cover. News is in air quotes as it's not exactly new. (laughs) Still, my name is Courtney and I'm here with my cousin. Cousin Cam, and I need to get right into it. Did you see Janet's tweets on International Women's Day? First, I should say we are recording this segment on March 10th and International Women's Day was March the 8th. (laughs) Yes, yes. I imagine you're talking about the Eartha Kitt tweet. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Actually, I think it was a post on IG. Yeah. And you know what? I love that Janet knows how to make you think on a day that you really should be thinking. (laughs) Yeah. She actually put out two post that day she did Maya Angelou Phenomenal Woman so that was like mm-hmm. right on the nose but then this mm-hmm. Eartha Kitt one was actually a clip and it's been on the internet for a little while but it's from a 1982 documentary The Eartha Kitt Story All By Myself and in it the interviewer asked Eartha if she would compromise for love and the laugh she <laughs> let out <laughs> the facial expression like yes. compromise like it was a disgusting word to say <laughs> yes and i was like what is janet trying to tell us you know what she's trying to tell us because we over history women have had to compromise we didn't want to come off as too strong or too demanding, too much attitude, even in relationships. And I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I compromise too much just because I want the other person to shine. I think it was fitting because women are women. We we don't have it easy. You can say that again. <laughs> yes. The fact that Jen is like. When someone says you should compromise to be in a relationship, compromise to get a this or do that. <laughs> laugh in their face like earth the kid <laughs> compromise yes yes i loved it and you know what and i felt like it was some double shade in there because all last week the meme had been circulating with janet and i think it was when she was dressed for clive davis's party where she had the yes. leather suit mm-hmm. on and the leather um band around her uh, braids yes. or her faux locks at the time mm-hmm. um that meme had been circulating and they had been referencing Eartha Kitt from the Boomerang movie. So like the meme says like <laughs> Janet standing here looking like <laughs> was like, come here, Marcus or whatever. Marcus. It was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I think she saw that and she was like, I'm gonna have a little fun with it. And yeah. she did. So I think there was a lot. I think there was two levels of shade. I think there was some some shade for her maybe past relationships or whatever and kind of expressing that maybe there's going to be a changing of the guard here um but Mm -hmm. also too like i see what y'all doing right (laughs) like (laughs) y'all think y'all gonna have fun at my expense i got you (laughs) yeah Uh, (laughs) look now i'm talking like earth the kid yeah (laughs) (laughs) also another post from janet caught my attention (laughs) I'm going to call it the coronavirus post. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, I still laugh. A, coronavirus is serious. It is not funny. It's very serious. But if any, if you, you saw the post, it was like reading the side effects to some bad medicine. <laughs> J- Janet stated facts, percentages, asked you to wash your hands. Just yes. all kinds of stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just it was good stuff. <laughs> yes. It was more detailed than anything the Surgeon General has released. And I didn't read it all because it was 32 paragraphs disguised as one. <laughs> but what I gather is if sis actually comes to your city on this mm-hmm. tour, she would mm-hmm. not be shaking nary a hand. <laughs> and she may likely be wearing a hazmat suit. <laughs> Not the hazmat suit. <laughs> hazmat, <laughs> but make it fashion. <laughs> yes. Alexander Wang will hook her up. I don't blame Janet because people don't wash their hands. I, I have been so disgusted. You know, that <laughs> clip of Adrian Ballon talking about not washing her hands at home has started circulating again. Oh, and boy. I just am just so disgusted. Like, what is the difference between in your home and not in your home? You're still a butt is a butt indoors, outdoors, yes. wherever you need to wash your hands. I just had a bad joke, but I'm going to keep it moving. <laughs> but let me just say this. I personally don't like hand sanitizer because it dries my hand out and then I'm looking for lotion. 
So I rather wash my hands with the soap. Yeah. Dry it off with the paper towels and keep it moving. But you know, like I said, I don't blame them because people don't wash their hands. People do not wash their hands. I did not know this. I didn't know. But this is serious. Like we're, uh, I'm in North Carolina and today they declared a state of emergency and just making some recommendations like work from home if you can and all these other things. And so, you know, I am, you know, uh, prayerful that this is contained, but I just want to encourage people like don't take unnecessary risk. I know it's very tempting um, to do some things where uh, you might put yourself in jeopardy, um, but it isn't just you. It's going to be the folks that you love and that you that you come in contact with who may not have the immune systems that you have that can just fight this right off. So I'm just saying, be mm-hmm. cautious, be wise and, you know, make some informed decisions. But I think we're all going to come out just fine. Um, but still, I, the only way that I can help somebody like I can't help someone if I'm sick myself. And so that's kind of been my mindset is just be like, I have to stay as healthy as I can so that, you know, if someone should need me, then I'll be available. Yeah. Can I just add one more thing, too? Because it's not a joking matter. But today, because I'm battling sinuses. So I finally sneezed because sneeze helps me with my sinuses. And like every coworker turned around and go, Kimmy, do you have the coronavirus? And I'm like, I have to sneeze. They was like, if you sneeze three more times, we're sending you home. I was like, no, they gave you a sneeze limit. I had a sneeze limit. So please. Some of us have sinus and allergies. We got to <laughs> sneeze, but I'm not contagious. Don't have a fever. So you say they're going to be flu. scanning you for a fever. Girl, don't say that because my daddy just stocked up on toilet paper. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> That's my it's aunt. serious. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Another post, another post <laughs> Janet shared on her social media was the Talladega College marching band playing Velvet Rope on Fat Tuesday in one of the New Orleans parades. And she shared that on her social media. Okay, you got to say Mardi Gras. Fat Tuesday, baby. Okay. Yes. All right, give me straight, give me straight. You know, down here, we take three days off for Mardi Gras. I'm not even mad, man. I'm, a, I'm all in favor of days off for any reason. Any reason. Are but we going to do a celery what? celebration? Yes, let's celebrate celery. Three days off. I don't care what it is. You just want them three days three off. Three days off. <laughs> Oh my! You definitely my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you know what? I have to. I have to, a confession, and this might actually, this might actually strip me of my Janet Jackson fan club card and possibly oh. my black card. So oh, you know, God. I've heard marching bands play this song time and time again. Like every black marching band plays this song. Mm-hmm. I only just discovered it's the Velvet Rope. I just thought it was just a very common song that all black bands know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sad I didn't recognize it either. See? But, uh, <laughs> See, you gotta play me. I'm not going to shame you. I'm just going to say, you are not alone. <laughs> I am here for you. <laughs> but we're far apart. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I got a chance to see Chrisette Michelle this past weekend in Biloxi, Mississippi, and she actually gave me a surprise. What? What happened? So she was performing her song, If I Had My Way, and all of a sudden she did like a little mini breakdown and she went into any time, any place. Okay. I, being a true Janet fan, jumped up and down and hollered, sing it, Michelle! Sing it! (laughs) I had my arms stretched wide like Jesus was coming. (laughs) And when I said I made sure she didn't forget the words, I was right there with her. I had her back. I love when artists give Janet that little love and, you know, recognize her influence on them. So I have to say kudos for her for doing that. She could have picked another artist, but she chose Janet. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into our interview with Kathy Highland. It was so much fun. She's good peeps. You know, when we finished, I realized we could have talked to her for another hour. We left a lot of meat on the bone. I know. We forgot to go back and ask her about Janet's Japanese Nokia commercials. And I have so many questions about that. Number one, you somehow get the biggest pop star in the world to advertise your cell phone and you put her on the balcony doing laundry? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if that's a question for Kathy though okay. that's more like for Nokia <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> but she did say she'd come back and chat with us again I think y'all bonded 
Chill, recognize chill. Let's get to the interview. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> We are excited today to talk with a very special guest, Kathy Hyland, makeup artist to the stars, like literally all the stars, Pink, Christina Aguilera, Queen Latifah, Lionel Richie, Lil Jon, and our beloved Janet Jackson. And perhaps even more important than all of that, I do believe we shared alma mater. No way. Go Cyclones. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were waiting to spring that on me. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Oh my God, I'm from Ames. I wasn't born there, but I moved there as a baby. So it's my hometown. That's oh, cool. So crazy. Well, my name is Courtney and I'm here with my cousin. Cousin Cam. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Cam. <laughs> Are you a cyclone too? I'm a green wave, so. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> I love it. <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. We want to talk to you about your career, how you got started in the industry, and of course, your time with Janet. But first, can you tell us what you love most about being a makeup artist? Um, I think in, you know, as a generalization and not just doing like, say, celebrities, but I think it's something I took for granted as a skill set I had from an early age. So it, it comes natural to me. So when you can do that for someone who's in the public eye or, you know, on a personal level, you take that worry away from them. Like they know that you're good at your job and they don't have to think about it. They know you're looking like I'm really protective of my clients. I think that I can be a sense of comfort to whoever I'm working with. That's what I like. Nice. Um, how did you discover that making people look and feel beautiful was what you want to do with your life? Um, it's funny because it really wasn't. It, it kind of came to me, you know, how things happen sometimes and through a side door. Mm -hmm. I had moved out to uh, from Ames, Iowa with a boyfriend from college who was an artist. Mm -hmm. And he worked in the record industry. And I was working for a little uh, design house, like a, a knit company down in Orange County. Mm -hmm. And we used to do photo shoots. And I thought, oh, that's more interesting than what I'm doing. <laughs> like we had a really great model and I'd see the images come in. So I kind of discovered that that would be really interesting. My mom was an Avon lady and a Mary Kay lady, but she was more just social and pretty. She wasn't like a salesperson. <laughs> and I used to do kind of the makeup at her parties and I did people in college. Like I knew I had a knack for it and I did one of my sister's friends for a wedding. So I knew I had that skill. Mm -hmm. My older sister that lived in Orange County met someone at a party who was a makeup artist. And she said, you know, you're really good at that. You should look into doing that. And it kind of planted the seed, but I didn't know what to do. And the woman my sister met was Karen Fay, who was Michael Jackson's makeup artist. Nice. <laughs> so jump to, I tried to, I mean, I was so dumb. <laughs> you know, I like FedExed my resume, which had nothing to do with makeup, to Michael Jackson's management company, like, you know, like, <laughs> like she's going to get it. You know what I mean? Of course I heard nothing. <laughs> and then I went about my career working at this dress company. And then I had a real eye for color. I ran their dye plant where they did custom colored knits and approved color. So then I got hired away from that job by a carpet company to be their color specialist. So oh, it's like, I'm just on my path, right? <laughs> Nothing yeah. to do with makeup. <laughs> so the guy that owned the carpet company loved me. He was like my dad. And I'm a little dyslexic and I transposed the color numbers. So we didn't have names for colors. We had numbers. Mm -hmm. And there was thousands of yards of carpet on this truck. And I had transposed the numbers. So it was a dot pattern. So the background was the wrong color you know it was switched uh. <laughs> so I'm sitting there at my desk and I was like is that what the thousands of yards of carpet are <laughs> and the driver was like yes and so I had to tell my boss I transposed the numbers blah 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 and he said you know what you want to be a makeup artist <laughs> <laughs> So, see, everyone, when a mistake happens, <laughs> it was a blessing. And, you know, I, I left that and I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to like wait tables and I'm going to go to school, you know? So I did that. I found in the yellow pages, now I'm telling you how old I am, <laughs> a makeup school. And I did that and I was like apprentice, you know, mm -hmm. under someone for that period of time. And then I'm really into visualization and manifesting, a little bit woo-woo. Mm -hmm. So on my list of 
what I was going to do, I was going to work for Karen Fay. I used to read that list every morning and every night. Mm -hmm. So I was on, I was doing craft service on uh, music videos to meet people with a friend of mine who was a model and a singer. So I'm at a Jefferson Starship <laughs> music <laughs> video doing craft service, handing out guacamole and chips. And the director's agent said to me, what do you really want to do? You're not a craft service person. I said, I'm a makeup artist. And he said, oh, the woman we normally use always uses assistance. And he handed me Karen Faye's card. Wow. And I reached out to her and I was her assistant for five years. And she took me on the road with Michael. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So now how long before, how much time between your sister meeting Karen Faye and then this moment happening in craft services? Probably about four years. Wow. For my career to kind of fall apart at the carpet company. <laughs> <laughs> for me to like have a come to Jesus moment, like what am I going to do with myself? You know, to then finding, yeah, the makeup school and, and all that. Yeah. Wow. But that's pretty years. amazing. Here's yeah. my, yeah, I, have a, I have a theory in life and my theory is what is for you will always be for you. And yeah, I love for that. you will find you. And mm -hmm. so it may not be at the time. Mistake. Yeah, it may not be at the time that you expected it, but there were some other things you needed um, right. before you were there. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And you might want to, uh, I can't believe the carpet man said, hey. I love hey, the carpet guy. Like, I know, right? <laughs> Mr. Benson, I don't even know if he's still alive. I was like a complete mess. And you know what the great thing was? He sat me down with like the sales rep who I totally screwed up his order. And it was for the Crystal Cathedral in Orange County. And what they did is they used that carpet for like their schools and offices. And then they rushed another order of the correct color for the actual cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> they made a double order, but that's not how you want to sell carpet. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, you started working in the makeup industry. Sounds like, you know, maybe around 20 years ago or so. Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> What is one moment in your career that you're most proud of? Oh, most proud of. You know, it's so funny. It's like, it's not that like I'm so proud. It's more like, what do I get to share with people? Like that was what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like, I have different situations of like, you know, like my mom got to meet Janet. Like when we came through Kansas City, like my nephew and my sister and my mom, you know, there's moments like that. Yeah. That. I mean, I got to do makeovers on Oprah. I like. I feel like I have a career that they don't even like exist anymore. <laughs> you know? So for me, it was all always moments I could share with other people. Like when I worked with Tony Bennett, and my mom was like a huge Tony Bennett fan. I was mm -hmm. really proud of that. Mm -hmm. You know. But I think just the fact that I've had longevity in my career. I, I mean, that I'm proud of. Cool. <laughs> Let's dig a little bit more there. Um, you know, we mentioned at the top of the show that you've worked with every celebrity ever. You know, <laughs> Shonda Rhimes, Glenn Close, Heidi Klum, Tom Cruise, Omari Hardwick, and probably like one to two billion more. <laughs> What's a memorable moment with a celebrity where you still think, I can't believe I was there for that? Um, gosh. Well, there's so many that come flooding through. People say, who's your favorite face to do? It's not really the face, it's the person, right? Mm -hmm. So I have, memorable for me, because I was a big SNL fan, is I, I always have been. Like, I love mm -hmm. comedy like that. So I got to work with Jimmy Fallon when he hosted the MTV <laughs> Music Awards, and I was in his dressing room oh, cool. with the writers. You know how they, they write jokes, like, to react to what's happening? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that was, like, a high for me. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, we love Jimmy. <laughs> yes. well, isn't he great? He I, is. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, ha I worked with him like, you know how they do those skits that they show then through the show? Mm -hmm. I worked with him like the week before and then through that show. It was just really fun. And then oh, when I, I was there like um, last year with Benedict Cumberpatch, it was, he was on the show and I was with Benedict and I reminded Jimmy, I was with you. And he was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> I haven't seen him since, you know. That's kind of fun. That's pretty cool. That's one of my super secret desires um, is to follow someone the week they're on SNL. Oh, oh my God. 
Yeah, it's that was actually I've been to SNL twice and one time was with Janet. That is one of my funnest jobs ever. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Oh, we got to talk about that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So let's get to Janet. Tell us uh-huh. about your first job with Janet. Okay, so and me, me always coming in through the side door. That's that's going to be my <laughs> – you're going to see that. Okay, so – I okay, so I toured with Michael, right? But I so I had touring experience, but with him, I did background dancers and the band. Mm-hmm. So with Janet's tour coming up, there was someone at my agency who I was used to be at a really big agency called Cloutier Artists, and there was a girl at my agency who was working with Janet, and they needed someone to travel for the summer across the United States to do the dancers, and I. And they were ha- holding auditions for makeup artists. So you had to go to a hotel and do one of the dancers. And then Janet would look. And they, they're kind of interviewing you while you're doing their makeup. And then Janet would look at the makeup. And then they decided who would go. And I got the job. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. And then, though, what happened is I toured this summer doing the dancers. And I had a lot of touring experience. So... Also with being someone on the road and being not just a makeup artist, you have to be, and I'm, I'm crazy organized and I'm crazy about sanitation. <laughs> so I was that person. <laughs> like I'm really good to travel with because I got, it's all straight. You know, there's nothing, everything. I mean, my label maker is my best friend. So I love it. <laughs> I'm that person. So they liked that about me and that, and that I could do a good job with makeup. And then what happened is Janet was going to Japan at the end of that summer to do a commercial. I think it was Nokia phones. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You did. Oh, please say you did those commercials. I did. <laughs> I did. So her makeup artist was not able to travel. She was sick. Oh. And Janet said, I'll just take Kathy. And wow. then I, she kept me. Okay, that doesn't sound like a side door entrance. That sounds like a legit, you <laughs> kicked in the front door. Yeah. Right, well, I just, it was like, you know, it's like that divine feeling of right place, right time. I was ready. And mm-hmm. she had already, she knew my personality over the summer. She knew my work. I'd never done her face, though. And that was intimidating because there was no one that helped me. I just had to go by what I saw mm-hmm. being done for stage and then interpret that for like her looking like herself. And so I'm in, I swear to God, it was the tiniest fucking makeup room in Japan. I was like, it was like a closet, I swear to God. So I'm like set up and I'm turning and looking at Janet, you know, because when you do someone's face, you like do their face and then you look in the mirror and then you do their face. And I swear to God, she was going, because we called her Jan. She was turning from Janet, Jan to Janet. (laughs) I like painted her. It was like, so bizarre because they really do get into an on camera on stage persona when they're it's like part of their uniform almost their face Mm. you know i'm sure you've heard people talk about that Um, no no, we haven't so (laughs) there you go that's what happened (laughs) so you took her from jan to janet that's what it felt like i was like oh my gosh she's looking like how you see Janet Jackson, mm-hmm. you know, because she runs around with like no makeup on a baseball cap. And what well, did she give you any type of like input on what? No, I'm sure we discussed it. Cause it, we, she always did like, like, you know, at that time it seemed to be a lot of earth tones and golds. I mean, that was like the palette she was into. She really, she always loved a red lip. We, we always like talk about, it. I think you want to do the light lip or the red lip or, you know, so you had like an idea. It's like a, always a fun discussion, which happens between what are you wearing? What's your hair going to be? What do you feel like? You know, cause it's like a, it's almost like a mood. You paint on a mood. Like I always feel like a red lip. That's a commitment. You know, yeah. it's like you gotta have red <laughs> lips all night, ladies, you know, <laughs> you got to take it with you. You know, it's like. I love that. I have a question for you more about makeup. Um, Uh What, like, how is the makeup you would use for the tour or a performance different than what you would do, like you were doing in that situation for, I guess, a commercial or or interview? Yeah, for them to just be themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, for stage, it's a lot of contrast, right? It's a lot of highlight and shadow, which is so funny because now it's so everywhere. But Back then, like I, the makeup school I went to, like it was, um, they actually taught us theatrical makeup too. Like I did the whole course where they teach you how to create characters. So you, you know, like how you would do something like 
on someone in a play who looks like they have a broken nose, you highlight it one direction and you contour it another. But if you do that on a face, like straight, like a straight nose and a straight jawline, it creates exactness and exaggeration on stage. And you can like line the inside of the eye with a white pencil, things like that can make you make the features appear bigger and they read better. So it's very highlight and contrast, which is very kind of what the whole YouTube like highly painted face is like, you know, which is so funny to me because that's very theatrical. <laughs> Um, which is not what people used to walk around looking like. Yeah. Now I'm like, I see people. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> it's crazy town to me. <laughs> that is pretty you funny. Know. So everybody looks like they're just walking around in stage makeup. Yeah, stage makeup. And we, it's like we people used to say, oh, Janet's done something to her face, like she's had surgery. I'm like, no, that's contour. I mean, we we did so much contour. I joked and called it the contour. Like it was, <laughs> <laughs> we could cut a jawline and we can cut cheekbones and we can, you know, and it was fun because I, besides doing Janet, I also did a couple of the dancers mm-hmm. and they loved learning how to do their face. Who, who was the best at doing their makeup? Um, Kelly. Kono. She, oh, yeah. she almost did her whole face. Like sometimes she would come in and just have me do like an eyeliner or help her with something, but she could beat her. We used to call it beat the face, man. It was like, <laughs> woo. Like, and my friends who'd watch me work, hairdressers, like, I, we, I had this line I used to say before I did someone, like especially when they hadn't done their, had their makeup done before. I did this, um, God, I don't even remember the name of them, but they were like an all girl band out of Detroit and they'd won some reality show and we were doing their quote unquote album cover packaging and I said I'm going to ruin you for every makeup artist to come <laughs> and I'm gonna paint you unrecognizable <laughs> like a stolen truck, <laughs> stolen truck. <laughs> <laughs> my friend was like you painted them into five little Janet Jacksons I'm like exactly <laughs> <laughs> so I remember I was like waiting in a theater for the movie to come on and they sometimes play music and I was like wait where do I know that song I'm like oh it's those girls that <laughs> <laughs> there, and I don't know if they ever did anything else, but I remember going, that's that song. I swear to God, I'll be in like a spin class and be like, I did this video. You know, it's like so funny. memory sensory flashbacks. I love that. Would you say that in your makeup career that you established signature looks for people? What was your method when you are working with an artist? When I was working with Christina Aguilera, I'm not taking credit, like I created this at all. But when she first came out, like Genie in a Bottle, she was Mm -hmm. very fresh faced. Like Mm -hmm. that's what her label, all her people wanted her like really like that. And I got to do her and um, she liked me because of Janet, which is great because I was able to say to her, Janet's never late. (laughs) Yeah. Janet is like, um, maybe someone else has told you, like the ultimate professional, right? Like she's grew up in it, but she's like never late, hates to be late, always gives you enough time, like all those things that make your job really easy, you Mm -hmm. know? But so when I remember I got to do Christina when she opened, and I think it, what was Justin Timberlake's band? In Sync. In Sync. (laughs) I think they were at the Greek and she was the opening act. Mm-hmm. And because it was a live performance, they let me do more of a sexy makeup on her because it wasn't going to be filmed, right? And she wanted it. I was like, uh oh, there's no going back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and then we kind of got to do, I got to do her like a little bit more and a little bit more, but. But that's when she started to be much sexier. And the Extina. They let her grow up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't, I'm not creating anybody's look. And yeah. honestly, it's like I've worked with so many people that are established. Like you kind of just do your best version of what they like to look like. Yeah. Hmm. I do have a funny story though. I was, I was hired to do not a makeover, but like an updated look on Stevie Nick. Uh-huh. She was doing a Christmas special with Michael Buble. And I just thought, let's try a new makeup artist. So she was like one of the coolest people ever. And I go to her house, I do this makeup, and it's very beautiful. But she said, this is not Stevie. <laughs> 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 In like third person. <laughs> like it's not Stevie. And you know what? She was totally right. Like, <laughs> and so that was like kind of a lesson for me. These people I'm working with, they know who they are. 
<laughs> right? I'm just trying to do my best <laughs> version of what they want to look like, you know. So That's she wants cool. you to keep it Stevie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's else. like, and I totally agreed with her. I was like, oh my God. The, I, and it was so subtle, but it was like very specific. And then when we went to do the special, I did exactly what you wanted. I thought, you know what? I'll do my version of that. Wow. That's really cool. We love Stevie Nicks and she is She's great. a Janet Jackson fan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Well, the reason I even got that job is because our tour manager was touring with Stevie. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's all a very small world, that whole <laughs> touring world. <laughs> I imagine it takes a special kind of person because like you can do makeup anywhere. So to yeah. commit to like going on the road and uh, enduring these grueling schedules that these artists endure, you know, that takes yeah. a different type of person and a different type of commitment. Yeah. And you got to be, you got to take care of your stuff and you got to not be a wimp. You know what I mean? Like they don't <laughs> want you like in like when lobby call is eight o'clock, you don't come down at eight fifteen. you know, on Michael's tour, there was a dancer who was always late and they left her in another country. <laughs> no, <laughs> She had to get her own flight. It was like, we are not, you know? <laughs> it was like in Germany or something. You know? Yeah, left her. <laughs> left her. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she was never late again. <laughs> left her. And the Greyhound don't wait and oh Michael doesn't right, either. <laughs> right? It's like, it's just, the plane's got to go. <laughs> well, it's true because we were actually on, it was a private plane, but it held 110 people. You know, mm -hmm. you have flight times. You have to get out. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, we yeah. have... We don't have 30 minutes. I don't know what you're doing. Like, you always know when your lobby call is, like the day before. Like, anyway. we'd all be like, where is she? Where is she? Oh, my God. The plane's saying, oh, my God. <laughs> Did y'all look out the window and just wait? Like, okay. we like, well, it was actually the bus to the plane. Like, she missed uh -oh. all of it. There are so many people. You had seat partners. So uh -huh. they could quickly account for everyone being there. I don't wow. know who her seat partner was, but they were probably like, <laughs> she's not here. And like, again, <laughs> you got to be durable to tour. And the fact that I was so organized is just like a skill set that helped me. Because in Michael's case, there was like a, a lot of people to take care of. 18 band members and dancers. We did cuts, color, everything on the road. So I'm a hairdresser too. Wait, wait, you did hair and makeup for uh -huh, Michael's, Michael's tour? Because when I started working for Karen Faye, mm -hmm. she said to me, um, all my assistants do hair. So I said, okay. So I went to night school. and we Wow. Man. I saw, okay, so naturally we read your resume and I saw that you did hair and makeup, but I didn't really realize like in a, in a singular job. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we were like a traveling salon on that tour. So that wow. was the dangerous tour, Just right? Tour. Mm -hmm. And it was 18 dancers and band members? Yeah. I had to shop, for, you know, because we were gone for such periods of time. I had to shop for everyone. And they were so generous on that tour. Like everyone had whatever skincare they wanted, their hair color, like all their personal specifics we shot for. So the, there was months of prep before taking out on the road that I had road cases that were all cataloged for each person. Like if someone came to me and said, I need more moisturizer, I'd have their stuff stocked. Oh, wow. Stocked and labeled per person. Yeah. So I took that skill set I learned with Michael on to Janet's tour. Because when you're traveling around the world, you can't just get like as many eyelashes. I only had so much road case, right? So I would make mm -hmm. the dancers wear their eyelashes more than once. <laughs> And they, they would have their names sharpied on the package and they'd come out of the shower room and they'd hand in their eyelashes. I love it. <laughs> Listen, all the girls wear their eyelashes more than once now. So you were just yeah. ahead of your time. <laughs> right? But that was like too much money to throw away. <laughs> Give me your eyelashes. That's right. You really you did, did have a system though. Like I, I did. They this is fascinating it. to me. You know, at the <laughs> at Iowa State University, I studied transportation and logistics. Shut and so up. all of this <laughs> is fascinating. To me. Okay, Courtney, you know that's what I ended up graduating in. No way. <laughs> okay. Oh, when God. I was there, when I was there, it was the first um year they brought okay, I was a pre-med student that was not hacking it and switched all my credits over to like what can get me out of here and that was a new degree and I'm so into organization they were like you should do this and I was like that's actually my degree it all makes sense now that's hysterical <laughs> oh my god 
Every time we talk to someone, I fight the urge to ask about like, how do you keep the laundry straight? And how do you get everything on the right buses? And like, it's, it's a crazy such a fight, but now you're just doing it for me. It's so great. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, that's like a traveling city when you see the a tour that's well done. I mean, please, I've only done big tours. I don't know what it's like now, but mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because it's definitely the touring industry has changed as far as yeah. like, mm -hmm. superstars and what they put into a show. And I think just in general, n nobody was really doing it like Janet and Michael. No. Uh, even even then, because they were at the height. They were the top two. Um, I know. At, at I was such time. a spoiled. Spoiled. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I one mean, more question about touring. What mm -hmm. did you love about it and what did you dislike about it? I know you saying it's like tra a traveling city. So was there certain things like when you was like, oh, I got to go on tour. I don't want to do this. No, I, I actually loved it. But for me, when I was done, I was done, which is why Janet invited me out again. I didn't go. And same with Christine Aguilar. I passed it on to someone else. I think I just got to the age that I was like, I had started to establish clients locally and didn't have to travel mm -hmm. and I'd kind of been everywhere and I knew that job I knew that you know but it was I mean I never had a passport before I went on Michael's tour so it like opened up my world like crazy and when you travel on tour there's three groups that travel a b and c a is the artist mm -hmm. b is the band which is I was in that group like band dancers and like you know some of the crew that was like production Mm -hmm. And then C would be, you know, everyone else, gaffers, lighters. I mean, we had two planes that traveled on Michael's wow. tour. Wow. 110. And then we had another large plane that traveled that had some equipment and some people traveled on that. Some of the crew guys traveled with that. So they leapfrogged. They had two stages actually too that traveled. So like leapfrogged across. So it took more than a day to set up. So it was wow. like a, it's a huge organization traveling. So I, you know, and with Michael, we did, I mean, this is crazy town. Can you believe this? One show a week. He wow. didn't do more than one show a week. So I was in London for a month and did four shows. Oh, wow. What about so with Janet? Hers was more congested. It would be two to three shows a week. And sometimes it was like a lot more travel, you know, like to mm. get. And, but the, the fun thing too, like we had so much fun on tour buses. You were assigned what bus you were on. And you become really close. I mean, you, you know, you watch movies, you have dinner after the show on the bus, you, you know, you become very close because you're traveling so tight with people. One of my closest friends in life I met on Janet's tour. So hmm. she's still like my best friend. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a great segue because we wanted to ask more about that. So like when you're with a group of people for a long time, you know, like you would have been with Janet and the team on that tour. I would imagine you learn a lot about them, but also yourself. So mm -hmm. what did you learn about Janet during your time with her that surprised you? I think that she um, was truly so interested in people. And like, she would ask me about questions about like my life or like the simple things that you wouldn't think that would be that interesting to her. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think it, she grew up so differently. So it was a bit like the normal was a bit interesting, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm like the youngest of seven kids. I grew up in Iowa. Like, I'm, I mean, I couldn't be more different. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I guess we're both the youngest of a big family. But um, but, um, you know, just I think that how even though she grew up a certain way that she was so like a normal girl when you're talking to her. And now I, she was, I mean, I was very close in a sense. I felt comfortable with her and we would talk about personal things, but she was really tight with her dancers. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, it's like, I'm not, I wasn't like her. She's going to go out. She's going to call me. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right. separate. Like I, w I was like one of the old, I'm like a few years older than her. And I was like, so my friend who was her massage therapist and nutritionist, like I would hang with her, or, you know, it's like you kind of, you had your people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it crossed over. Sometimes we'd be going, we're traveling on tour and we'd be, I would go on Janet's bus when we had to do arrive into a city and do press right away. So I wasn't on the other bus mm -hmm. or if we were doing photo shoots or things like that, or I think we did a video on the road or something. So sometimes when my press schedule 
demanded I be with her when we, I would go on her bus. But that was a handful of times versus the whole tour. Were there ever times where you were doing her makeup and you thought to yourself, wow, when does this woman like ever get tired or? Yeah. And, and that was, yeah, it's like a, when, when someone's prepping to, to go on stage, I mean, I'm sitting here blabbing right now, but I know to be quiet. <laughs> I'm very good at reading a room, you know, like I know to say enough for them to feel for me to be accessible and they know that I'm in a good space. I'm just going to do my job, but I'm not chatting in her ear. Like she could not like she's going to fall asleep, but she could totally just shut down. Mm -hmm. And I am also known for working very fast, which they always appreciate. How long did it usually take? I could do it in like 30, 40 minutes where wow. some people would like, I remember the first time I did her face, she was like, you're so fast. And I was like, do you want me to go slower? <laughs> you know, like, cause you know, there's some like really well known makeup artists that take like hours, you know, right? Like she'd be like, I can't believe I've been, you know, and right. I'm saying they're like, you know, like Kevin Aquani he's like known for, he would take forever, two hours sometimes. Right. Wow. Lay her yeah. down in a chair and yeah. And I'm sure that's yeah. a gift too, a gift to oh. give them that time back to do whatever exactly. she's got to do. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, especially when it, you know, as a makeup artist also, you know when to take your time and when you don't need to, right? Like, okay, she's going to be on stage. You know, if my liner is not like perfect, it's not a magazine cover. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you kind of know when it needs to be exact and when you can like, okay, I can roll this out. I can do this fast. Right. As long as there's contour, you're yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beat the Gotta get the contour. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So what did you learn about yourself during the tours? Um, I, I think it just reaffirms things about your personality that you know and that, it, you know, it becomes more of an asset. I'm very, I get along with people really easy. I can be a mediator between people. I, you know, I'm very adaptable. Like things that you know, it just kind of gets magnified in that situation. Like you better be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I wasn't someone, you know, because it's like a tough schedule. I don't, I don't get sick easy or like all those things. Like I know how to take care of myself. So, and I think you just have to take your routines that work for you, like on the road. And the great thing about like Janet being so into like fitness and health, it's like we always had great gyms at our hotels. It was, you know, the catering was good. It's like, there was like that. It was an environment of self care. Nice. Nice. Um, I know you did a couple of video shoots with Janet, um, go deep and together again. Uh -huh. What do How you, you remember? find that out? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm seriously like the sleuth in you guys is amazing. <laughs> She can work with the FBI. <laughs> you're like, you're you guys are untapped resources. <laughs> we try. We are though. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So what do you remember about the video shoot for Together Again? Like how many days? How long did it take? And anything oh, okay. that sticks out about her makeup that you know that you did on that shoot? Um, no, I just remember that um, I, I, we did a really beautiful photo shoot with her with Michael Thompson on a break during mm -hmm. that video. That was really pretty. Um, I think, you know, for me, because I was always, it was, and you know, it's, I mean, I can't believe I can say this, but it was in the mix. It was either Kevin or me. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was like the most famous makeup artist in the world. <laughs> Or you. And the, the, the fact that I even got to do a video was like, he's obviously not available and they can't adjust the schedule, you know, like, so I just felt lucky to be there, honestly. Wow. And I just didn't want to like mess up, you know, so it, you know, and I was, I was on a video. What was the name of that one? You guys probably know it. Was it, oh, go it was deep? out in the desert? In no, the desert. I was Oh, you want, him. you want this? this? You want this? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was doing Janet's makeup and I was doing the dancers. Oh, so, that, that was, that was a hot day, huh? Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> and there was, oh, you guys have probably seen this. It ran forever. Cause if you're sleuthing like you are, there was, there were MTV used to do these behind the sh scenes video shoots. Mm -hmm. And there was 
it's like some clip that ran like forever and i'm like sitting in the corner looking at a monitor like sweating like crazy and it ran. My friends are be like, that clip of you keep That's running. That's you. Like, I didn't know that. It's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah, I think I'm in the corner. Like, it's so sweaty. You are. <laughs> okay, I've never seen I mean, I haven't seen it in, like, however many years. But, you yeah. Are. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I don't, it's like MTV used to do all that, like, making up. Yeah, that was really, I felt like that was MTV's best content. And I yeah. wish we still had the making of so we could see behind the scenes of the videos. And I kind of like pop-up video that was on VH1. Yeah, pop-up Those up little fun facts. Uh, yeah. Oh, about, was it about the video making? Yeah, it was usually about the video. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess they, do they really make videos like they used to? I guess they do some, right? I don't know. I don't think they- that. I don't think videos not are like they the once 90s. Were. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's yeah. over. We've we've seen the golden age of videos. Yeah, right? I think oh, everybody yeah. now just takes their camera phone and have their buddy oh. record in different angles and put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it is. Like, I know. It's where our jobs are going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can go on about that because I just like kids these days don't know the feeling of waking up and watching video soul or mtv and i remember when mtv had like a whole hour of rock videos so i would sit there and watch that waiting on mtv jams you know things yeah. like that <laughs> and when they would release one it was like a big deal yeah yes you know I like i still it's remember not le- waiting for thriller yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> I yeah. have a confession. I don't like Thriller. <laughs> it scares me. Well, it scares, it scares me. Funny. I, Still I, now. I'm going to watch, watch Ghosts, so I'm just telling you that Thriller <laughs> okay. is, is less scary. <laughs> thriller was scary, man. Like I was like, no, I can't listen to it on the radio or nothing. <laughs> it's like, you know what's it- funny is when those people, okay, so we had those Thriller heads that dancers had to get into those costumes on. Mm-hmm. When you're in... It's Norway where it doesn't get dark, you know, in that part of the time of the year where it, it stays light till like right. yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock at night. So they're out on stage in that and it looks like so silly. Like in you're the just, daylight. <laughs> in the daylight. <laughs> and they're dressed in those like skeleton costumes. It's like, we can see you. <laughs> you know, you're like doing all this like miming and stuff. It's like, yeah. So that, that number was always like a huge production on his tour. That's mm-hmm. awesome. I personally love Thriller, but I do agree that it was unnecessarily scary, and I can't believe like that we just sat around and listened to this like a regular song. I was like, we just listened like, to a horror story. <laughs> I know, like a movie. Yeah. Like, how, it's like a book on a tape. Video. What is this? <laughs> I know, right? Imagine the budget and the, how much, how long that took. I mean, yeah. I yeah. mean, his videos were like no other, right? Like, right. Scream no. still holds the record for what mm-hmm. most expensive video. <laughs> Is it yes. really? What did she mm-hmm. say? It took like a week or something? Yeah. Yep. 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 Mark <laughs> Romanek does not want us to remember it as the most expensive video. He said that is not a record he wants to hold. I'm like, well, oh, sir, it- you got it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask, since we were talking about Michael a little bit, um, you were there for the Super Bowl. Yes. yes, that was amazing. Tell us about that. That was one of those jobs where you're like I can't believe I'm here when you asked me that before because it was we were down on the field and when they did that choreography with everyone in the stands flipping their mm-hmm. cars I mean it was like I was like goosebumps like oh, crazy wow. <laughs> just a, you know and an unbelievable um well the thing is too with Michael I traveled and worked with them like all over the world not in the United States you know the concert experience and stuff was an all abroad. So it was kind of cool to be in the United States with, you know, and my family get to see it because all that stuff I did was before there was anything online. So nobody Mm -hmm. saw it. Nobody came to tour so they could see, you know, that was cool too. And that performance to me is still the best Super Bowl performance. I think it set the standard for Super Bowl performances because I mean, I still remember him jumping out out uh-huh. of those stages on those trons and then popping up on the stage. And he I just know. sat there, stared, stayed still, not moving. I'm still like, how do you not move with the I wind know. blowing and the smoking? I know. <laughs> I'm sure they're like for TV, they're like, tick tock. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> like, we just are like, we're paying for a show, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, like, I'm the king. Y'all gonna right. wait. You will wait. Uh, <laughs> I have a great Michael Jackson story, though. It's so when on that tour, we had quite a bit of time off and we went back to Japan after having like a few months off. So we're in Japan 
and he's rehearsing, you know, it's like a dress rehearsal and they're rehearsing. Um, everyone's in their costumes. Michael's in the gold, you know, LeMay fencing shirt and background singers are dancing. And I'm with my friend who is this wardrobe guy. We're watching the monitors and the, they were going to rehearse the stage and the, the way the stairs come out for the girl to come out of the audience. Mm -hmm. So they're just doing all the mechanical rehearsals. I said, I should go be the girl at the bottom of the steps when they do the steps, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, I dare you. I said, okay. So I run under the stage mm -hmm. <laughs> and Michael's just singing. I mean, it's empty besides like production people in the audience. And when the stairs come out, the background singers start laughing because they see me standing down there and Michael sees me and he flagged me up on stage and he sang to me and I have pictures. of yeah. that. So he sang that song to me and I got to be the girl. <laughs> Wow. wow. I know. It's like, ah. So you just lived everyone's dream is what you're yeah. telling us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, I was like, why not? I'm like, and that's when you realize like how bold you are. I'm like, I can't believe I did that. But <laughs> mm. Well, since you toured with Janet and Michael, are there similarities or differences that you notice between the two? With Michael, I think staffed was like over 300 people. Mm. And with Janet, it was considerably smaller. Will you, you know, and with Michael too, there weren't that many women. So I'll still run into like crew members that will be like, I know you from Michael's door. And I'm like, really? Well, there was like 12 girls out of, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so they're going to know who you are. Hmm. And with Janet, it was a much smaller operation. <laughs> Interesting. Um, what, let's talk about Janet for a little bit. What current makeup trends have you been excited to see Janet wear or maybe... You haven't seen her wear yet, but you think it would be something you would think it would be nice for her to try? Um, you know, I just, I think I, I mean, I, from what I've seen on her and some of my favorite looks of hers when she kind of does that monochromatic look, you know, where it's really a bit subtle. I think it's so fresh and pretty on her. I mean, she's such a beautiful woman. It's mm -hmm. like Agreed. when people say who's the prettiest, you know, face, it's like she's right up there. Like she doesn't. It's just her, her face lends itself to makeup to the eye space, the cheekbones and how you can sculpt her face. Mm -hmm. So I love her in that really kind of simple look, like a strong lash line, like a lot of lashes and not a lot of eyeshadow, but a cleaner and then like a brow defined and a bit monochromatic in the lip tone. I think that's so pretty with her coloring. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, that's more personal appearance and stuff and not really a stage look. She would need more of her stage. I think, you know, what, I, what I'm what i into now, which it, my career has kind of transitioned, is I'm, I'm into clean beauty now. So I've, I use a line of product that's banned 1,800 chemicals from the line. So wow. I'm really into educating people that you can do all those looks, but safely and with a clean line. So... It would be fun for me to work with her and know that I could do all the looks I did on her, anything she wanted using this product line. So, because women of color are at the highest risk also with more pigments and toxins in their product line. So it was something that I learned only about five or six years ago, how toxic our products are. And it was a part of my career. I kind of just was looking the other way mm. until I got into it. And it was a bit of a dive deep. And then how am I going to clean out my kit? And how did you discover that? Like, how yeah. did you discover that you wanted to make this change? Well, Benedict Cumberpatch actually is the one who asked me to find him skincare that was paraben free. And I was like, it had been noted to me before that with I missed out on a job with Tobey Maguire. They reached out and they said, well, you have to have an organic kit. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, mm -hmm. this was way before you could find things now. Like, clean beauty wasn't even a phrase. And so I went to Whole Foods and I'm like trying stuff and nothing. Everything's greasy and weird. I'm like, I can't do this. Like, if they gave me a kit, I could do his makeup. But so it kind of just stuck in my head. And then, you know, kind of interesting. A man then brought it up again and said, really want to use like products that don't have parabens. So, when I went looking for products for him, I discovered this company called Beauty Counter. And mm -hmm. Beauty Counter means counter to the way the beauty industry operates. Mm -hmm. And they sell direct, like from consultant to you. And I have a website where I sell, beautycounter.com slash my name, Kathy Hyland. You can shop. You have access to me as your consultant. Like I 
people call me and text me and I help them select products. I help design a look for them. I help them switch to safer. So that's more what I do now. And I have take personal appointments. Like I was with a client today. That's what I was doing. It's like, I look at what people are using and I help them switch to safer. So in my pro kit now, I use very, very tiny amount of things that beauty counter will probably never develop because you can't do a waterproof mascara and things like that and eyelashes wow. but everything else I use professionally like all the images I have posted in the last five years it's all using beauty counter products so that would be something I would love the opportunity to do Jan I all my other faces like all the time I worked with Shonda Rhimes and that was all beauty counter so mm. Helena Bonham Carter like I work from every skin tone Mr. T I worked with the other day all mm. beauty counter yeah. except for his mohawk <laughs> wow yeah. That's, yeah. this is fascinating I didn't know there was that many chemicals in makeup yeah, yeah. And, and toxic so in in Europe they've banned over 1500 chemicals in the United States we've banned 30 yeah I believe it mm -hmm. and this line has banned over 1800 wow so it's a it's not chemical free because not all chemicals are bad but not all uh, natural things are safe, right? Because there's lead in that's what's in long lasting lipsticks and really pigmented eyeshadows and oh, wow. formaldehyde. Yeah, preservatives, you know, so it, it's a whole um, industry that had not been, there was no clean beauty. And, and Beauty Counter is the one who established that name, Clean Beauty. And I thought, I want to give back to an industry that has given me so much. And now I really consider myself more of an educator. When I'm doing celebrities, I just do my job. And if someone asks me what I'm using, I tell them. Sometimes people hire me because they know I use products that are safe. You know, cancers and things that are environmental and not biological in your history of your family. So many things are from the daily use of products we use from sunscreens to moisturizers to actual you know, beauty products. Our skin is the biggest organ, it absorbs into our bloodstream and, you know, so it builds up. That's the awareness and that's what I try and teach people and that you can do everything you want to do safely. Perfect. That's pretty cool. And also, I think it's very telling that it was two men, like probably people who would not be your everyday makeup consumers who just like get yeah. up and pat it on to go to work, but who wear this stuff occasionally who said, yo, 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 what are you putting on yeah. my face? <laughs> well, but it's also, it was more like the skincare, right? Cause he knew like Benedict knew because our products are different than Europe and he lives in London. So he's oh, like, yeah. wait, I'm using this stuff. It is, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but at what cost, you yeah. know, I've already leaked how I'm like spiritual and I'm in it. So Benedict Cumberbatch, we use initials when we are through my agent with your email. So there's no, in his name so everything's mm -hmm. bc bc mm -hmm. bc and i was like okay and then i discovered beauty counter and that's bc bc uh -huh. i'm like okay this is like a god wink right <laughs> so cool hey so yeah. before we let you go we have two last questions mm -hmm. first what does your everyday makeup routine look like oh i'm like all about fast <laughs> five minutes five minutes or less um i do my my skincare which I prep my skin with a serum and I do a face oil and an eye cream. And mm -hmm. then while that's drying, I quickly will do, you know, I'll get dressed or something because I want to do my makeup once my um, moisturizer is like set in. So I just do, I define my brow a little bit with a pencil. I do mascara. I'm into like kind of a neutral eye right now. So I'm using like a highlighter and a bronzer for my eyeshadow mm -hmm. and just a little cream blush and a lip sheer. So I'm like, I'm under five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, and, it, and if I can turn it out if I want to, but I just find that it's more my personality to be less. Hmm. And if I want to throw anything on like a red lip, you know, I'll do that. But ha like I said, it's a commitment, right? You got to own that all day long. <laughs> 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 now every time I see somebody with red lipstick, I'm like, you gotta own it. You gotta right. own it. You, you gotta you gotta say you have that with you, right? <laughs> like because you know. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. First interaction yeah. with a straw, it's over. Um, <laughs> I know, right? 
<laughs> you know, and that's another thing on set. So I'm like, I always have to have a straw on me, like with their lipstick. It's like, <laughs> I have the most equipped set bag too. That's another thing. It sounds like it. <laughs> but we've, oh my God. So, there's been times on award shows we've had to stitch people back into their dress or it's like, it's good to be a team. That's the thing. And, and finally, how do you hope Janet is remembered? Oh my God. Well, I think, you know, how sweet was she in there um, when she was inducted into the Hall of Fame? I -hmm. think just that she's so talented. And she, you know what? It's like, okay, I grew up in the days of like Madonna and stuff too. Mm -hmm. But Janet was first. She was the, I mean, to me, I don't remember anybody dancing like she danced and sang. I mean, Mm -hmm. she was the first to do that. Mm Mm-hmm. That's how I think. And I think just that, well, she's such a kind woman and how she treats people around her. So that's why I think anybody that you talk to, right, like loves her, you know. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I think just that she, you know, to get to the level where she was and she was always kind and just that incredible talent. You know, it's like we would watch her in rehearsals or even when she was learning new choreography, and, you know, the dancers can be, like, full on. And Janet's just kind of marking it. But you're still looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, she's got that star quality where she could not even hit the moves as hard as any of the rest of them. But your eye goes to her. I mean, mm-hmm. She's, mm-hmm. she's a star. Just that charisma and that energy that comes from her is so genuine. I had such a small time that I worked with her, you know, but I feel really fortunate that I had my slice of time with her. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you will be like etched with her because she only has so far the one book, True You. And if I'm not mistaken, the photo that she used on the cover, Makeup by Kathy Hyland. Yeah. They reached out to me when they were going to use that and that I was so flattered after all the images she could have chosen for her book cover that it was one that I did. You know, I don't know if you could say my name if she's going to remember me. I bet you would, though, because I, I feel like she remembers a lot of people, even fans that we've talked to say like, and it could just be like, she's a great actress. We don't know. But they say that they feel like she recognizes them when they run into her again. Uh huh. And yeah. she does. She does, though, because I remember this time. I know we we're in Europe. Her husband at the time, Renee, brought up these fans to her room he would do that sometimes mm-hmm. I can't remember what we we're getting ready for and and there, she had a fan that talked <laughs> talk to her only using lyrics of her songs it was <laughs> incredible <laughs> wow I, I couldn't even attempt to duplicate it but it was like mesmerizing and Janet had said something like I've seen that, that you know like she knew their faces yeah that's amazing like, and it was like, oh my God, that's like the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, the, but the Jacksons, you know, they have those crazy fans. I'd be like, with Michael, we would see people like in one country and they would be in the next country. You're like, what are you doing for a job? <laughs> like, I don't know about you, but don't you have rent? Like, that I is my question like, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Yeah. Right? That is my like, question a lot. We see there are a lot of fans who tour, who basically tour with Janet. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, what kind of jobs like, do you all have? Right? Are you like all bloggers? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> are you guys going to see Black Diamond? Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I was just talking to, I think I am too. I was just talking to some friends. We're going to get tickets. We got to. Like, I, it's amazing to me that she's still doing this. Like, she doesn't have to do this. Right? But, but you know, <laughs> I think when people are that good at what they do, it's also, it's fun for them. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, they're really in a whole other level when they're in that performance stage thing, that, that synchronicity with an audience and that, you know, and she's, I mean, please, if I could dance and sing like her, I'd do it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'd still be hauling my ass out. No, (laughs) No, she puts on an amazing show, right? I didn't, I was so bummed I didn't see the last one where she had all her dancers come back with member in LA. Yeah. 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 And I was happy to be home working that night and I was on the computer and I was, I see some of the girls like posting pictures and someone posted a picture of, it was like Tina, it was like three of the dancers with Janet. And I was like, I painted every face in that picture. And they start like live chatting with me and they're like, hi. And I was like, oh my God, it was like so 
fun. And I was like, why didn't I go? Like, I don't know why. It would have been fun, but I'll, mm. I'll make it to this one. Cool. cool. Well, I think that's all we have. Unless, oh, is there something no. else you want to tell us? No, I'm, I'm pleased. I can't believe we talked this long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, feel free to edit whatever you want. We're using all of it. <laughs> we, oh, yeah, you yeah. guys are too cute. And I'm just so happy for you that you have this. It's really fun. It's a great service you do the other fans. We appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We You're welcome, ladies. Thank have you been for a joy. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> have fun, have fun. Yeah, right. it's a real pleasure. You guys are sweet. Go right. have a good night. That is it for us for now. If you need more Janet Jackson, which we know you need more Janet Jackson, you can subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're already a subscriber, please tell a Janet Jackson fan about us and leave us a rating or review whenever you're listening. Your comments and ratings help other people find us, especially on iTunes. If you're not already, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Janet Jackson Pod. If you are following, thank you for every like and every single retweet, especially on episode releases. Those are simple things you can do and they go a long way to help us reach new Janet Jackson fans. Our intro and outro music, Good For You, is provided by THBD and is licensed under the Creative Commons 3.0 license. Thanks for listening to Janet Today, Janet Tomorrow, Janet Forever. Hey, before you go. Yes, Cyclone. We, we have to mind. Yes, listen. I'm so excited. How okay, in the world? stay in touch with me, girl. Logistics. Are you serious? Like- oh, my God. <laughs> God. God. <laughs>